The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus continues by saying, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Today in our readings, we hear, particularly starting with that first reading, a call to wisdom that that we be a community that follows the, the lead of Lady Wisdom. And so in so many ways, this is kind of the perfect day to offer blessings and prayers for students as they are beginning their education all year, a new year, but also not just for the students. It is a good time for praying blessings for those teachers and administrators and support staff and all of the people who are about the educational process. At the same time, in the gospel reading, we hear Jesus identify himself as the bread that comes down from heaven. Now, Many who study wisdom writings in particularly the Old Testament, that space where you hear Lady Wisdom, they will tell you that in the midst of all of that, John's telling of the story of Jesus tells that story in such a way that Jesus is the embodiment of that wisdom. Now, Diana Butler Bass is a, a lay person, a scholar within the Episcopal tradition, but one of the ways that she talks about wisdom is that those who have wisdom are people who know God. And so in Jesus, what we encounter is one who so knows God that he is indeed God. And what Jesus has been teaching and what Jesus is embodying in his work and in his ministry and as he moves through all of the things that he is doing is he is defining himself in a way that challenges the religious community and particularly the leaders of his time. He calls them to see the task of living faithfully in a different way, in a different light. And the way that he interprets tradition and scripture and the truth of God is so radical because it focuses not on getting the law right and getting the right things done, but rather focuses on what God is doing and the nature of God's love for all creation and for God's people in particular. In this challenge, Jesus calls that community and our community to grow. 
Now, we hear today that when Jesus offers that invitation, that challenge, the religious leadership didn't like it very much. In fact, um, they took offense. They started disputing among themselves. And instead of going to Jesus and asking the questions, they were chattering about it within their community. And Jesus responds to their questions. Now, what we know is that when we are challenged to grow, it often brings, well, change. With growth comes change, and generally people are pretty clear about their relationship with change. We don't like it much. And in fact, even when we know that the change is a good change, a change that needs to happen, a change that will bring something that is better for us as individuals or the whole community, we tend to resist change, often with every fiber of our being. And when we resist change, <laughs> there often is some conflict that goes with that. I believe that's precisely what we witness today in our gospel reading. We witness Jesus defining himself in such a way that he is calling the community to change its understanding of what being faithful looks like, what being faithful does. And in the midst of that, the leadership is resisting. They don't like it much. They're called to grow and to change, and now conflict arises. They're disputing among themselves. But what we hear Jesus do in response to that is not to engage the conflict, but rather to continue defining himself. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. He doesn't fight the conflict back. And in the midst of that, even that is a challenge for more growth. A challenge for growth that changes the culture, changes the community, changes the way things are done. And that change, well, we know that the story unfolds in such a way that the conflict continues to escalate, to grow more intense, and the cost is high. Now, among those people who teach leadership, the model that I'm laying out is part of kind of what they understand as being the way things are. When there is growth, that growth brings about change, and change often is met with conflict in a variety of ways. It is true within the church. It's true within organizations anywhere. It is true within our families. So whenever leaders start to set a course that changes the way that we do things, that call for change often brings resistance and conflict can arise. Peter Steinke writes in uh, his book, uh, Leadership in Anxious Times, he writes that congregations that seek peace at all costs are committing themselves to never be able to grow. That when we value peace above everything else, we will not be able to embrace change, and if we cannot embrace change, then we as a congregation cannot grow. But I'm guessing that those who are educators know this as well. If you do not challenge students, then their worldview and their basis of knowledge and all of the things that they bring with them to school do not shift at all. But when we do challenge students, often the response 
can be resistance. And it can even come out with outbursts and sometimes some anger. I'm guessing parents know this as well. And to avoid this struggle, to avoid these challenges, is to just accept that that student will stay where they are. And that's contrary to the educational endeavor. So, as we offer up prayers for students later in this service, and as we pray for educators of all stripes, we are mindful that they are engaging in a new season of growth that will, we hope, bring about a change. But also we know that there can be struggle in the midst of that, internal struggle and larger struggle within the community. And so our prayer is, that just as Jesus defined himself as present in the world, God's love present in the world. Recall a few stories back. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son. That those who believe in him may not perish but have eternal life. And so we offer up prayers that Educators and students alike know that in the midst of their endeavor, in the midst of, of the challenge, and in the midst of the reaction, that God is present with them. At the same time, as church, and specifically as, as Zion Lutheran Church, let us not shy away from the struggle, the conflict even, that can arise as we define a course forward, whatever that course may be, towards growth, towards being the church that God is calling us to be, and know that sometimes such growth, no, all the time, such growth brings challenge, brings change, and sometimes brings conflict, because not everybody's ready to embrace it. Yet we also must remember, as educators and students do as well, that as we work our way through defining our new reality, our new worldview, our new base of knowledge, our new understanding of what it is to be church, in a culture that is changing around us, we must ground everything in the kingdom of God that Jesus embodies. That kingdom is grounded not in judgment or focusing on getting the law right, but rather is grounded in God's love. God's love that dares to come down and live with us, enfleshed in the person of Jesus Christ. And that love calls us to love God and to love our neighbor. Jesus changes everything in the way that he embodies God's kingdom, in the way that he embodies God's love, in the way that he lives as God's presence among us. In following Jesus, we are each called to define our way forward in light of that truth. And that truth is that indeed Jesus is the bread of life that has come down from heaven. All who eat and believe will have eternal life. 